Spoiler alert, I really like this season. Oh, I'm black and I'm proud. I'm black, they can't keep me down. I'm black and black with a smile. A black beam of a man. Hey, y'all, it's producer, and today we are reviewing season two of Dear White People. Was it good? Was it bad? Well, I really think it was fantastic, but I'm going to be spark of this discussion. We're going to continue in the comments below and maybe future videos, or maybe not. I don't know, but I'm going to start this review slash analysis with um, the little stuff that I liked. So, um, first, I just want to say that I appreciated that the parodies were so much funnier than the last season. Like, it's it's... I guess maybe that so some people it's not a small thing, but they they played a small part in the in the show, which is why I don't consider it that big of a thing. But I, I really like that they were really, they were funny. I, my favorite one is Principalities. I wanted to get a picture of it. But all of the illegal sites do not have it. Of, of episode five for some reason just can't show. Every time you hear episode five, it shows episode four. I don't know why. I do not know why. But anyway, Principalities that was one of my favorites, and Ayana. Van Slat, I forgot her name. You know, Fix My Life Chick. Her parodies were funny as well. I liked them. There was, an, there was another parody. Oh, it was the Real Housewives of Atlanta parody with um, Lena Waithe. That was real good. That was really good. So, I just want to praise to that. I also want to give praise to the diary ending looks. You know what I'm talking about. You'll see it later when I talk about the characters. But um, it's at the end of each episode, and I just think it looks so cool. It's like, at the end of the episode, it looks at the camera, and it's like, oh, I've told, this is the end of my chapter of my story. Um, what you gonna do with that information? I, I just think that's interesting. And uh, the soundtrack, the soundtrack, I like how subtle it is, because they don't play it too much, but when they do play it, it's pretty good. I can't wait to listen to it completely, because I haven't... Because you have to, to listen to the full album, you have to buy the whole album. Hello? Like, I can't just buy, like, individual songs. Most songs you have to buy the entire album. That's what I should have said. Um, but I can probably find, like, a free version on YouTube. That's what I did for season one. Uh, which, if for those who do not know, that is a theme that you've been hearing for all my Dear White People videos. It is Black from the Dear White People season one soundtrack by Internet James. A lot of people don't know that. Even I'll put credits in the description, but whatever. And, um, what else? Oh, I really appreciated, um, the reintroduction of the movie characters, the movie actors. Tyler and Tessa coming back, I, that was really cool. Um, it sucks that Carson couldn't show up in the show, but it was nice seeing him again. I was like, okay, okay. I want to see Tyler and more stuff, like, outside Dear White People, though. Because maybe that's just me not knowing stuff, but I want to see him in, in more stuff, you know? Because he's a cool, he's a really good actor. Ever since I made Chris, and I'm pretty sure he had a start before that. So y'all should, y'all should, they're, they're sleeping on my mans for no real reason. And Tessa... Tessa talking about business. I'm still interested. I'm still interested. Homegirl, you can talk all day. Now, I'm just really curious as to... Um, they didn't really do much of her character episode 10. But what she had to work with with her, like, five minutes of dialogue, she did a lot. And I was here for it. So, like I said, minor stuff, minor stuff. But I appreciated it. Now, this... This is what I this is like a prime example of like the little things that I like in this season, as opposed to last season where they just have a background and the character of focus is just like sitting there, not even still, just moving a little bit. This they have a beautiful visual with the lighting fading in and they're holding an object, and that object is important to the character or what the episode is about. And it's just stuff like this makes me appreciate this season so much. Another thing that I like was that the sex scenes were not so jarring. I swear they were like shock value, you know, because you'd be going to one scene, they're talking about something random or something very normal. And the next scene, boom, boom, ooh, ooh. Cheeks just plopping. Plopping, hopping. Okay, point is 
people there's people are smashing okay and i'm sitting here like w that's random why why i think they're doing it for the shock value just you know to get people off guard i don't understand why they did it but this season they built it up a whole lot better it made sense you know i don't understand why they did, couldn't do that before but whatever <laughs> i'm just glad they did it now on to my little small complaint list uh Earlier when the season, before the season was released, I was on Twitter and I was live tweeting with the live rerun of the series. And I was told by Dear White People, the official Twitter, um, that Rashid and Akumi, they were going to get a whole lot more attention. They didn't imply like a full uh, episode centered around them, but... They, it, they they said, uh, I said they, they deserve more development. And they were like, we hear you. And then fucking Mark Richardson, the person that plays, I don't know, is it Mark or Mark K? I feel so stupid. Um, the person that plays fucking Reggie, he fucking retweeted my tweet. And he he was like, um, he had like the big facts, say it louder for the people in the facts emojis. I mean, people, lot, people say it louder for people in the back emoji. And... So I thought, oh shit. So, oh, I guess now they say it out loud. That makes sense because I guess he sort of foreshadowed that they weren't going to get that. Point is, I feel lied to because I thought that Rashid was going to get something. He didn't get too much. The most that he spoke was in episode six because he was with Al, you know, trying to figure out what the T is with the dog. We didn't really learn too much about Rashid this season. Um, and Akumi was absent. Akumi was freaking absent. Oh my goodness. The, but the person that got a uh, development that I would not think, I mean, that, I mean, the person that got development that I would not think get development from last season was Kurt. Kurt sort of sounded sensible. And then when I, I, the best part of Kurt was the last episode when he was like, people thought that was you. I mean, that you was me. I mean, people thought that I was you. So fuck you for tarnishing my brand. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was one of the best parts of him, of him, not the entire season. That's way too much. Um, and then season, season two, episode two, he sort of sounded a little woke, you know, sort of, but I'm not going to give him too much. Because you're saying shit that white people should already know. But, you know, people have different journeys. And my other complaint is that y'all didn't do anything with dear white people. What was the point of dear white people? Dear white people. Because I thought it was going to cause a whole lot more strife between dear white people and dear white people. But they didn't really do much. I guess maybe it's the presence, you know. Because they were referenced a lot in uh, a couple other episodes. But they were not really... They didn't do much. And then I was proved on episode four. Because in episode four, they did the slander thing saying that like Coco and Sam were involved with the fire. Well, that didn't really build up to anything. That was stupid. I mean, I guess it built up to potentially Coco not getting into Pegasus, but I want to see them do more. I think they hosted um, Ricky Carter coming, but I mean, that's, that's really it. They could have done more. They could have done more. I almost forgot one more thing. See, one more thing that I liked about the season is the inclusion of all IVW. And I understand that sounds really stupid. But hear me out. Um, it's a all IVW was an interesting antagonist. He did too much, you know, he didn't have to you know he had to troll everyone, and by his BS, he was empowering a whole bunch of other bigots. I didn't like that, but there are people like that in real life, and that's what I represent, because maybe people don't see that they're all IVW, but I guess maybe people who are all IVW most likely wouldn't watch this show. I don't know, but when I say people who are all IVW, I really mean white people, okay? The fact that it was Silvio got me shook, but that's another good thing. Because there are people of color, there are conservative people of color, there are um, Republican people of color, there are people of color that aren't really as left as most people of color are in the United States. And that is fine. And they deserve a voice, although Silvio makes them look really intolerant and stupid and attention whorish. I mean, he's not, that's not the only type of whore he is. Hmm. Uh, according to Joel, Joel, according to Brooke, 
He is a story whore. I'm just kidding. That's not the only whore I'm talking about. Anyway, I think that adds a lot to Silvio's character. I don't like Silvio, but as an antagonist, maybe I should. Silvio's not an antagonist. All VW is an antagonist because Silvio didn't really do anything. Because you know, no one. Well, actually, I guess later, halfway in the season, people find out. But I still feel like they're two different characters. You know. You know. Um, and I think that's it. So, speaking of Silvio and other characters, this is the character portion. I really, like, because there's a lot of stuff I like with the lighting and the writing, the directing, the acting. Oh, the acting was fantastic. Oh, my goodness. But let's talk about the character development, which I guess still counts as writing. So, first on the chopping block is freaking Lionel. Oh, my goodness. I love that he, a lot of episodes, he was learning about his diction, you know, word choice. What does he say that represents him as a person? And he went to really straight territory and was like, bet. And I was like, ew. <laughs> and Troy was like, ew, that's not how you say it. Because he's trying to figure out, oh, is that what he says? Because this is literally, after, no, this is before, my bad. Before all the trash white um, news news writers before he met those but he's trying to find a place and he goes there trying to be like oh maybe we can fit with them and then he realized how problematic and really stupid they are oh my goodness that was i was rewatching um pretty much the entire season to get these photos and i'm realizing they're trifling how could you think that they were ever going to be a good candidate as like a friend group or whatever but um, and then in later in another episode, wait no, that's the same episode. It's the same episode. He's like Yaz girl queen slay, and, and then he was like, Ugh. everyone else was like, Ugh. and that's fine. Lionel needs to learn how to find himself, and he's gonna mess up, and that's fine. <laughs> so last thing is that I'm really excited with his ambitions trying to start up a new newspaper institution and trying to get a Pulitzer Prize. I like learning these things about Lionel. And this season, we also explored more of his gay side, as I said before, him trying to have been with the gay white writers and whatever, and he having his better relationship with Wesley, which, by the way, I called him being broken up with Silvio. That's so producer. Oh, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. <laughs> but so that's a producer. I called it, saw into the future. You know what else I saw? Reggie and Joel fucking. <laughs> I'm so glad that's a thing. I can't wait for that to be more developed in season three, along with Lionel's, hopefully his uh, black owned newspaper empire being maybe the new root, you know, the root of that uh, universe. But yeah, uh, Reggie and Joel. Reggie, I'm glad they explored PTSD. And I'm also glad that they explored um, mental health and therapy for black people because Reggie, he he got some help from the dean, but I still don't think that he's open to the idea of therapy, which a lot of black people are not. And I think that's just a good visual representation because I think every viewer would agree that he needs help, but he was pushing it away. So I'm glad that they discussed that. And because he was like fucking and drinking his problems away. That's not good. That's really not good. And um, also, another great quote from Reggie is that he said, racism is white people's dog. I totally agree with that. Coco got her own episode again. It was ironically both episode four. And this one was dealing with how she's trying to get power. She wants to be in Pegasus and how she wants to get power and maintain it. Because she, uh, she wants to get into Pegasus and she wants to um, be the leader of CORE, which she actually achieves. And I think it's really interesting how they structure that. And she's trying to, like, coordinate all these things. And so I'm I'm glad for her. Um, she says that she wants to be a senator, um, which gives us an idea of what she wants to be. She wants to be, like, a political, powerful type of person. I tried to do alliteration. Eh, maybe I'll get that in another poem. But not this. Not right now. Because I didn't, I didn't plan that out. Um, anyway, I like that. And the abortion thing throughout the episode, um, uh, like, looming over her head. I was about to say lingering. Looming over her head like a ominous dark cloud for a storm. Like, she's like, oh, I'm going to have to deal with this. 
and she just keeps putting it off to the side and keeps bothering, keeps building it up. And so she decides, I mean, she has to decide what she want. And she sees in the future that if she has this child, ugly, ugly named, I mean, I mean and her name is Penelope, which is an ugly name. Sorry, all the Penelope's out there, but I don't like that name. But um, she realizes if she has Penelope, she does not feel that she's going to get the job that she wants. Because that did not look, that looked like a law firm or something, an insurance firm. I don't know, but that did not look like she was a senator. Mm-mm. Not at all. Um, so I guess that's why she decided to abort the baby. Um, we can talk about pro-choice and pro-life all we want. But I think we can agree that this, because she even says... I'm not, I'm not always this perfect robot. I make mistakes. I mean, that says it right there. She tries to be perfect, but that doesn't work for her. That I mean, that didn't work for her. Um, Sam's episode was fantastic. I mean, not Sam's episode. Sam's development was fantastic because I did not care for Sam season one. She looked like she just wanted to start trouble. She literally sent the blackface party, which it was interesting to know. Oh, these white people think it's okay to do blackface. But I personally think I'd be fine with white people I mean, without, without knowing that. Like, that, that was extra. And then her protests weren't really the best methods in season one. But in season two, she stops being, she's less of this radical individual, an angrily radical, and she gets more dimensions. She's more developed character. With her with her father passing away, her being cyber bullied, um... Or the history with her family, I think that develops her character a whole lot more. Get more of appreciation of where she comes from. Um, and at the end of the season when she dropped, she decides, I don't want to be like Ricky. And drops two white people. I think that shows the most development out of any character. And I appreciate that. Joelle get her own episode. <laughs> yes. And it was half about the whole tap and half about her. I would appreciate more about Joelle. We finally don't know what she's in school for because a lot of people, we don't know what they're in school for. Joelle's there for anatomy. And I don't know. I don't really know too much about her besides it's implied that she does not get the respect that she deserves. Um, Y'all better stop messing with my girl. She gets this little corner. And during the talk show, she, um, what's it called? She kept getting cut off. I gotta treat her right. And Reggie, so it took 20 episodes for Reggie to finally make a move. At least he punched for her. A little out of his character, but whatever, whatever. And uh, what's going on? Kelsey. I'm so glad Kelsey, uh, um, she didn't get her own episode as I wanted, but she pretty much did. You know, just like how Trevor technically got his own episode with Joelle, Kelsey technically had her own episode with Coco. Because she was there being a nice, supportive friend. And I I just love Kelsey for that. And a lot of people liked her for her representation because not only she's Trini, which, she, which Trinis are not represented that much on TV, but she's also a black lesbian, which isn't a butch, which also is not represented on TV. So a lot of people like that as um, a straight American with low-key Boricua roots, um... I don't really relate, <laughs> but I'm glad for some people to have that representation. Um, so yeah, that's with uh, a lot of the characters, things I liked in the season. Um, if I have to say, this season was a lot more funny. Like I said earlier, I mean, this season was a lot more serious. It was a lot. It was I heard, I saw and read an article. This season was gonna be a lot more dark, and that is a freaking fact. This episode, I mean, this season was a lot more dark, and we're at heavier themes of cyberbullying, PTSD, abortion, um, whatever, whatever possessed Silvio to do, oh IVW, I guess fame, notoriety. I don't know. A lot of a lot of bad stuff, but you know, a lot of good stuff came out of it. <laughs> um, the writing was fantastic. Like I said before, the directing, screenwriting, Justin Simeon, uh, Chuck Hayward, Yvette Lee Bowser, all of y'all, everyone else who's in development, the crew, y'all did fantastic. Oh my goodness, this is my favorite show. This is my favorite show. Um if I could get predictions for season three besides, you know, Joelle and Reggie being more established and uh first of all, I 
I, first of all, I want to say that I claimed every single relationship. Joelle and Reggie, they, they got together. And Lionel and Silvio, they broke up. And, and Gabe and Sam stayed broke up. So I was three for three. Psychic. <laughs> um, but I, I'm trying to think what else can I say? Because I don't know. What, I They don't have the most obvious ideas for career. I mean, for story paths. Besides maybe exploring more the Order of the X. Um, I'm not sure. Look like Troy is interested in being past, in pastiche. Which, by the way, I did. I purposely forgot about Troy. I mean, I purposely did not mention Troy and Gabe. Because Gabe's episode was interesting because of the dynamic between Gabe and Sam. Not because of him. And Troy was one of the weaker episodes, honestly. Sorry, Brandon. <laughs> but anyway, Owen, how can I forget? How can I forget? Brooke, you had a fan, Brooke. Courtney Sauls, your character, Brooke, I love how you portrayed her. It was fantastic. I love your sexual humor. I love your intellectual ambition. I love everything about you. You're fantastic. <laughs> anyway, that's what I have to say. Uh, I... This episode, this is, I just like my third re-recording of doing this because I had so many ideas. But anyway, thank y'all so much for watching. If y'all have any comments, you know, a continued discussion, put them down below. And I will see y'all whenever. You black and you love it, put your hands up. If you black and in public, put